What's up gamers? We're gonna be going over all things dragon related in Tears of the Kingdom. Let's get into it. Now there are a total of four dragons in the game. Nadra the Ice Dragon, Dinral the Fire Dragon, Hirosh the Electric Dragon, and the famous Light Dragon that you see in the beginning of the game. Each of these dragons have their own pathing, which I'll go over when we go into the breakdown of each one. Now each dragon also has five parts that you need to get. Horns, claws, fangs, scales, and spikes. You can get horns by attacking a horn crystal that's right on their head. You can get a claw by attacking, well, their claws. The Light Dragon has it labeled as a Talon for some reason and not a claw. I don't know why, but if you know, you can let me know. You can get fangs by attacking their mouth, but this is a little bit complicated because you have to hit the lower jaw of their mouth. If you hit the upper part of their mouth, you'll accidentally get a scale. When you get a dragon part, you cannot keep farming non-stop because it'll not work because there is a given time limit. This time limit is really simple. 10 minutes in real life is equal to 10 hours in the game. That's exactly how long it takes for you to get another part of the dragon, and this does not include the spikes. Once the dragon starts to re-glow, that is going to be your key symbol that it's time to re-farm the dragon for whatever part you need, besides the spikes. You can find spikes by running on them and checking around the big, well, spikes on their body. Now, spike shards act very differently than the other dragon parts. If you stay in the same area, they won't respawn. They actually have a chance to respawn based on in-game ticks. So basically, you have to leave and move to a different area, and then if you come back, you have a chance of it being there. So make sure you get away from that spot because that's pretty much how the calculations in the game work for respawning certain things. Now, here's some basic rules about the dragons that you should know. They will be constantly moving in their given path no matter what you do. Changing the time of day doesn't change their path. Sleeping in a bed or being by a campfire also doesn't change their path. Blood moons from testing don't really affect their path as well. Other things to note is that you can never take fall damage on a dragon. When you catch a gust of the dragon's wind, your stamina will start to refresh. If you ever fall off of a dragon, you can always use their gust to help you get back onto it. Also, please keep in mind while you're farming that cooking with dragon horns can give you a 30 minute buff on any of your foods or your elixirs, which is extremely OP. Also remember that certain dragon parts can be used for upgrading armor. So keep that in mind when you're at the Great Fairy Fountain. So you want to farm dragon parts for that. And spikes and horns are really going to be big for weapon fusions and looking really amazing to deal that amazing elemental damage and also that healing damage. Now, the best way to find Nadra is pretty much by coming out of either the Mount Lineru Skyview Tower or by popping out of the Sahasra Slope Skyview Tower. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is very important is because this dragon is going to have a pathway. Now, any of the hours that I mentioned in the video for the dragon pathing is thanks to Reddit user Shurix who did a ton of testing by seeing how long the dragon moves around in their given path. Now, Nadra, the ice dragon, approximately takes 28.5 hours to complete its path, with 16.5 hours being on the surface and 12 hours being in the depths. So that's basically 16 and a half minutes to catch it on the surface, and about 12 minutes to wait before it re-emerges from the depths. It's going to emerge out of Nadra's snowfield chasm and then move around this area, completely circling here. And then it's going to come back up all the way and head down and descend in the East Hill chasm. Once it's down in the chasm, it's then going to go around this pathway, just like this, circle this area, come back here, and then it's going to emerge back to the top. And that's pretty much going to be its pattern. So if you're not able to spot it, it flying out of Mount Lineru Skyview Tower or from the Sahasra Slope Skyview Tower or from any of the sky islands above, you can just go ahead and camp right outside the Nadra Snowfield Chasm until it does come out. Now, as you approach Nadra, you want to keep in mind this is a very, very, very cold dragon. And you can see I'm now officially in unbearable cold. So something I like to do when I'm on Nadra is I have a shield with a ruby on it and that's going to give me pretty much one level of resistance of of cold, but I also am going to be equipping the Archaic Warm Greaves, and that's going to keep me a lot more warmer. So there you go. I'm not freezing anymore, and I pretty much can stay on this dragon the entire time. So when you're on Nadra, you want to be just aware of what's on its back, on the spikes, and run across every single one until you see some of these little spikes that you can collect. So you'll see them right over here like this. So there's the Shard of Nature spike, just like that. And I'm, then you get a, quite a bit of them. So don't miss any. Make sure to circle around all of them. Now you can also see that while we're on Nadra, there's these little ice things blowing here. And these, if you run into them, can freeze you and you don't want to get frozen. So you want to avoid those every time that you ride on it. Basically, you got to hit it, get apart from it, just like this. 
make sure to pick it up and you're pretty much good to go and you're gonna wait 10 minutes and you can notice that the glow has now gone down on the dragon now you can stay on the dragon and keep farming the parts you need every 10 minutes you just won't be able to get more spikes unless you teleport far away and the game ticks match up with respawning more spikes. if you happen to fall off to chase a part then simply teleport to a Skyview Tower or drop from a shrine in the Sky Island. All the dragons, I do suggest that you don't do the fangs or the claws until you are above ground. Here's what Nadra's spikes look like on some weapons. And you can see that it basically freezes all the enemies. And it looks really good. And the hard spikes can break rock. My favorite is the horn though because of how cool and aesthetic it looks. Now let's talk about Dinroll, the fire dragon. This dragon is going to be ascending out of the East Akala Plains Chasm and then making a whole entire trip around this area it's gonna keep going all the way until it comes to this spot where it's going to descend in the drennan highlands chasm so if you are trying to look for it above on the surface i highly suggest you first jump up from the ori mountain skyview tower and look around and if you can't see it over here then try jumping from the typhlo ruin skyview tower look around and see if you can get it the fire dragon takes 48 in our games to complete its path it spends 24 hours on the surface and 24 hours in the depths what this means is you're just going to have to wait 24 minutes if you're above the ground waiting for it to come out so spend 24 minutes or or less depending if you don't know where it is by the east akala plains because that's where it'll come out the most important part is when you are approaching this dragon and you get really close to it you're going to notice that you are going to start getting very very hot this is going to cause you to need to use the flame guard gear flame guard is what's going to protect you and you're not going to use only one you're going to be using two flame guard gears in order to protect yourself while on it because the last thing you want to do is burn for the flame guard gear on the dragon, I bought one item from Goron City pretty much at their armor shop and it was just the flame breaker armor. And then I was able to get the Va Rudana Divine Helm which also has flame guard and this pretty much can be found right over here by these lizards. You go to this one up here and you go right into this cave and you'll find that helmet. So you don't have to spend any money on the helmet and you can get yourself full flame guard with your armor. That way you can avoid those little fire things that are on the dragon as well and not burn. Make sure you don't have any wooden weapons equipped because those will also burn while you're on top of this dragon. So pretty much once you're on the dragon, you can go ahead and collect all these spikes on its back. And then after that, you can decide which part you want to farm. You can shoot on its body for its skill. You can go for its claw. You can go for its fang on the front. Pretty much anything you want. And like I mentioned, it's going to take 10 minutes from the first item you get, not including the spikes, to get the next one. So wait until you see a glow on its body, and then you can shoot the exact spot that you need for the next item. Now, the weapons for this dragon are really cool when you have the spikes and you have the horns they're going to all emit fire elemental damage and you can equip it on anything from a long range weapon to a short range weapon to your lance or even to a boomerang it'll just look amazing and do some great damage and that's pretty much it for this dragon for the electric dragon Farosh, he's going to be coming out of the east gerudo chasm so ascending out of this chasm right here which is south from gerudo canyon skyview tower now this dragon is pretty much going to come right out of here and make a full-on pathway all the way here until this chasm the hills of baumer chasm which is literally right by the papa foothill skyview tower this electric dragon's pathway is going to be 30.5 hours which means it's 30.5 minutes irl with 14.5 five minutes being on the surface and 16 minutes being in the depth if you're trying to look for this dragon one of the two things i suggest for you is first you can jump out of the skyview tower look around if you don't see it go over to the pop left photo skyview tower jump up look around and see if you can spot it you can camp the east gerudo chasm if you want to wait for it to come out now something to note about riding the electric dragon is one you can wear the lightning helm to protect yourself from any lightning attacks and the other very important thing is to unequip all your items because it has a bunch of lightning balls spreading out on top of it as you can see in this footage and if you get hit by that your character is going to drop it so put away anything metallic you can have some wooden weapons out this will make it a lot easier when you're on top of this dragon make sure that you are going ahead and farming all these spikes on its back that's going to be the easiest part of this and then basically hit whatever part you want on this dragon and then wait another 10 minutes till you can get your next one so in this footage i do dive down with with the dragon into the depth and you can nuke out a bunch of the light roots down here something i've noticed that when you're down riding it you don't really encounter many thunderstorms down in the depths the thunderstorms and the lightning strikes really happen when you're above 
So that's the only time you want to not really be equipped with electric items and just have your items away. So let's also talk about what the weapons look like. They're basically going to be electric elemental weapons. Pretty much like electric weapons, when you attack an enemy, it's just going to disarm them. And there's a lot of cool combinations you can do. And the bright yellow just looks so good on both the spike fusions as well as the horn fusions. So this is what they look like. Uh, definitely something you want to farm as well. That's pretty much it for this dragon. Now, the light dragon is a very interesting one because at the start of the game, it's going to be a lot higher in the sky than any other dragon. You're probably going to need a flying machine to get to it or be at a really, really high part of the sky island. But if you clear the quest in the Korok forest in order to fix the great Deku tree, the Deku tree is then going to mark the light dragon on your map pretty much because it also has the master sword in it. At this point, the dragon is going to be very easy to reach from any sky view tower because that dragon is going to be following a clockwise pattern on the map. If you want to know how much that light dragon is traveling, it takes the light dragon 111 hours and 15 minutes in game to make its complete trip around Hyrule. That is going to be about one hour and 51 minutes IRL in order for this dragon to make its entire trip. If you want to go ahead and catch this dragon and be able to jump on it and farm it besides just the master sword, I suggest that you hit the sky view towers in a very clockwise manner. Now, sometimes when you see the light dragon, you will also see other dragons close by since it does actually overlap with the other dragon's pathways. And the benefit of not pulling out the master sword from the light dragon is that you can always use it as a tracker to see where it is. Once you pull out the master sword, it's then going to be a whole game of you going to sky view towers and seeing where the dragon is exactly. Now, when you're on this dragon, you don't need any special equipment or armor. The only time you're going to need to put on some maybe clothes to protect you from the cold is when it passes by the cold mountain areas. When you're on this dragon, you could just go ahead and grab all the cool spikes on its back and grab any of the horns, talons, fangs, or scales that you see fit. And it's also going to be a 10 minute wait on this dragon. Uh, the light dragon is going to be very useful for upgrading armors like the champion's leather and the tunic of memory. So keep that in mind. Um, Just like other dragons are going to be useful for other armors. So you just want to farm a lot of each dragon. Anyway, the, one of the really cool parts about the light dragon is that the spikes and horns that it drops, that when you fuse them to weapons, they're going to be a really nice bright white. And it looks amazing. And my favorite part about this is that when you hit an enemy, it's going to heal you for one fourth of a heart. And there's just so many combinations that you can do with healing with weapons and then switching over to another element and then attacking and going back and forth. So that's going to be a really fun thing to do. And that's pretty much going to be the light dragon. Okay, so now you're an expert at getting all the dragon parts, but do you know how to do this? Check this one out. 